Welcome back, fellow shop rats. This is the very first episode in season five of My Car's Shop, or for those who've been around a while, you know it's really Mike R's Shop, just so you know. Can't believe this is the beginning of our fifth season already. It's crazy. Things are happening. There's a lot going on. And on today's Talk About It Tuesday episode, I just want to spend some time kind of talking about where we've been, where we're at, and where we're going in the year 2024. Let's get into it. I'm Mike. This is My Cars Shop. For those that are new, My Car Shop is definitely a DIY shop, and we do things that make other people's heads explode. explode. But our philosophy is keep it fun and keep it safe. Other than that, it's no holds barred. Now, there's ways I prefer to do things, and there's ways you prefer to do things, but my hope is that this channel will inspire you and encourage you and be somewhat entertaining for you to continue you on your journey in your insanity in the automotive world, whatever that happens to be, whether you're just one who enjoys watching the shows or you're one who has a project car or you're one who's dreaming of a project car or you like fabrication or you like restoration or you like preservation or building motors or that's just a little of the stuff that we do around here. And my goal is to help uh, facilitate and try to be uh, an energy. I mean, I always figure that the one thing you can learn, if nothing else, is that's definitely not the way that I want to do things. And if that's what you learn from the channel, then there's nothing wrong with that because you're still learning. I always say, I'm an example. May not be a good one, but I'm an example. We do have 12 projects that we're working on here and we bring other projects in once in a while when we occasionally do a job for somebody else. The Stitches Challenger has been a massive fabrication project and that's a controversial one I know because rather than going out and buying stuff, I'm hand fabricating almost everything I'm doing for that car with a few exceptions. All the floor pans, the frame rails, stuff like that. For the most part, we're hand fabricating that and people say, well, why are you doing that when you can go out and buy it? And I say, why would I buy it? when I can make it. Now, I know I can buy it all for a Challenger, but can you buy it all for a 1957 Peugeot? And the skills and the techniques and the things that I demonstrate here doing this car are things you can apply to the ones that you can't buy the parts for. We have our $500 paint job, which was actually what I was hoping to be doing today. And my weekend kind of didn't go the way I planned because uh, Friday it was rainy and I couldn't paint. Yesterday, Dad was here to work on the Oakland and I, was, I saw the weather forecast and I was planning to paint that truck today and it's raining again and with a water-based paint. I've learned it's don't paint when it's really high humidity or raining out. The Forsyth Duster is there patiently waiting for its love and attention and that project is different because we're only fabricating a small part of that and we've purchased floor pans and a, a torsion bar cross member. We do have to fabricate an inner rocker panel on the driver's side because I can't find one. Uh, so that's going to showcase some different things on that project and we should be on that soon. As soon as Stitches uh, comes off of the rotisserie, I want to have that car ready to go on the rotisserie so that we can get the underside of that car addressed and whatever areas on the frame need to be just quickly patched up and stuff like that will be done. And of course we have the golden mullet and the 68 Dart Pro Street GTS and the 47 Ford Street Rod and the 69 Charger and the 73 Scoop Swinger and the 74 Sassy Swinger and uh, the 88 4x4 truck and my 2004 Cadillac CTS. And, well, there's just all kinds of projects that we continue to rotate through the playlists and the channel and the shop. My plan is to continue on with our episode schedule as we've done, where we do Friday, Sunday, and Tuesday. Friday and Sunday, not always, but we'll generally be more hands-on stuff. But we're definitely going to be kicking that into gear now that we're after the first of the year. Uh, we're going to be filming episodes on the Challenger, and of course I will be painting that truck. I want that thing out of here because I want my GTS home. It's been in storage now for almost a year, and that's on me. I know it's on me, but I don't have room for it, so it's in storage while I'm painting the truck. Um, we're going to continue on with our Talk About It Tuesday episodes, but we're also going to be interjecting a new series in here once in a while on uh, decluttering your shop and shop organization and so forth. Uh, if you've been around the channel 
uh, for all four seasons, you know that's something I really struggle with is clutter, not knowing what to do with things, with things, not knowing how to keep things organized. And I just did an episode on that recently. Uh, I think it was on a Sunday or a Friday. I think it was a Sunday. Um, might have been last Sunday when I think about it. But I, I did an episode where I was talking about um, shop organization and so forth. And I'm I'm really serious about being intentional. I think that's right. I'm really serious and being intentional about sharing that part of the journey with you because I firmly believe that I'm not the only one that struggles with that. And I think there's a level of accountability if I'm sharing that with you. So it helps keep my shop cleaner. Although I do have a bunch of tools to put away from yesterday when dad was here, that'll take five minutes to do. I've already done the trash part of that. And that's just all the simple stuff that needs to be dealt with. Um, but I want to continue moving around the shop. Now I'm not going to share you know, every time I'm cleaning off a workbench, I'm not going to share cleaning the workbench. What I am going to share is some philosophizing. That's a big word like gymnasium. I'm going to share some of my philosophy and what I'm learning and what I'm teaching myself as we go down that path. So if there's something new that I'm learning about organizing or some new thing that I find is being very beneficial as I'm applying it in the shop, then we're going to do an episode talking about those uh, philosophies and those things that I'm learning. I want to share that part of my journey with you. Um, when I walked out here today, absolutely, and yesterday, seeing this area clean over here, um, seeing it more organized, I feel good about being out here. And I want to continue on that process in this journey with you. So that's a series that's going to be coming. We may put that in its own playlist separately from our Talk About It Tuesday stuff that we've been doing for a long, long time. We will continue to share shop improvement things with you as well, like we're going to be finishing this up here. Um, one thing that I really want to accomplish this spring when this car is off, hopefully off the rotisserie, maybe even before, I want to get this floor power washed and get some paint down on the floor because it will make it easier to keep things clean out here. We'll share some of that with you. We're going to continue to upgrade the lighting. We have a few more fluorescents to replace in here. We're going to be redoing the electrical in here at some point. I was hoping we'd be doing that in December, but this project is taking me longer than I was expecting. So you'll see episodes about shop improvement as well. And my reason for sharing that with you is there's things you can do to improve your own workspace, make it more efficient, make it more beautiful, make it more fun to be in, um, that, that maybe I can inspire you by what I'm doing to uh, make things better for yourself. And that's, you know, the, the hobby isn't just about the cars, but it's also about everything that goes with the cars. I don't plan on straying from the core of the channel, as we've talked about many times, about being a DIY shop, keeping things attainable for the average guy who doesn't have a huge amount of income and who needs to learn how to do things on a budget if he's going to enjoy the hobby. And so we're going to be doing things on a shoestring. Uh, we're going to be doing things without spending a lot of money, and we're going to be accomplishing things that you might not think are accomplishable without having big stupid money to throw at something. We are not a big stupid money shop. We are not a big stupid money channel, and even though we do have 12 or 13 projects going, uh, mostly for myself, but also you know some like this for somebody else, um, the goal is always to show what you can do with some creativity and some ingenuity, how you can go further forward on anything that you're working on and, and surprise yourself. We are also going to uh, continue to look for those deals on shop equipment. You know, we've picked up a lot of equipment in the last couple of years. We had the uh, Dake Arbor Press donated to the channel. We, had, we picked up and purchased the uh, lathe for 500 bucks. Uh, we had a, a drill press donated to the channel. Um, there was a couple hundred dollar unit that a guy donated. We picked up uh, and purchased a valve grinder and seat grinder set for, I think, $400. Some of that stuff may not be in the budget for everybody. It's not always in my budget either, but I'm always looking for those deals. There's a couple other things I really want to get. I want to find a really inexpensive mill. And I really want to find a tire machine. I'm not in a position to do anything about that right now. So that's probably exactly when I'm going to find that 
$500 mill somewhere. But anyway, regardless, um, so we will, you know, with the guy who has a little bit of expendable income or uh, is able to, like I do, I try to sell parts or sell other things to provide some income for the channel. And of course, the channel has grown enough now that it's providing a little bit of income as well. And you guys are amazing at sending me and donating stuff. But I really don't want to stray and fall into that unobtainium kind of channel and show where I've got uh, TRW sending me a thousand dollar set of pistons for this. And I've got crane cam sending me, you know, uh, unlimited life supply of cams and this company sending me that and that company sending me that I, I don't want to be that channel. I'm not at the point where obviously I'm having to deal with that. Um, but I feel like the channel could grow to the point that that could be an issue and whether it is or it isn't, I want to be prepared to not compromise the integrity of what we're about. Maybe at some point, if we get to that point, I might indulge one project and indulge all of that just for fun. But I really never want to stray from the very beginnings of this, which is uh, you know one guy working out of a 100-year-old barn, working on old crap that nobody else would touch. I think that with transparency, there's a level of authenticity that most people can relate to and whether you agree with the way I do things or not doesn't really matter to me. Um, don't mistake me for somebody who actually cares what somebody thinks about me. But I will say that I don't hold back from sharing the mistakes. I don't hold back from sharing the screw up. So I'm not going to say I share 100% because sometimes in the editing process, uh, I realized that something I was sharing was a big just a big right curve from what the episode was about. But if I screw something up and it's in line with what we're trying to accomplish for that particular episode, I'm going to share it with you. I did that recently when we rekeyed the tumbler on the challenger and I lost one of the tumblers. That episode hasn't aired yet as of the time I'm recording this. And it's probably here on the floor somewhere still. I never did find it. And I know that some people are probably going to blow a gasket over that. But you know what? It works just fine. And every key I've tried in it, except the one cut for that, work doesn't work. The one I cut works. So I think at the end of the day, function is what's important. And things don't have to be perfect to work well. And I think that's something that can encourage you that uh, years and years and years ago, my wife came up with a saying that I really has stuck with me. And that is, Things done imperfectly can still be a blessing. And I think that's so important. There's a time to be excellent. There's a time to be perfect. And there's a time for good enough. And I try to share my thinking with you in light of all of that. That's what this channel's about. So that's what I see coming in season five. I also want to just say here at the end of season four, which was just last episode, um, I want to, from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you um, for everything that you bring to the, to the table. Um, some of you send donations of money. Some of you send donations of parts. Uh, some of you send encouragement. Some of you email me with pictures of your projects. My email address is always down there in the comments. Um, you offer great comments on the videos. You're not afraid to say, hey, this or that. Um, I will say one thing I would like, uh, Fitzy over at Fitzy Fabrications is doing a answer question thing. And um, if you have questions that you would like me to specifically address on the channel, shoot me an email with those questions. Let's not necessarily put it in the comments because I might not see it. It's getting, it's starting to be hard for me to keep up with all the comments. I know there's going to come a point when I'm probably not going to be able to respond to every single comment on the channel. Um, that's kind of bittersweet, but that's the reality of growth. But if you have specific topics that you would like me to do a talk about it Tuesday or something in the shop you would like me to talk about or something you'd like me to demonstrate or something I've demonstrated in the past you would like me to revisit, shoot me an email over there at mycarspage at gmail.com. Like I said, that is down there in the description. Um, and I will get to responding to that as soon as possible. I'm always searching for Talk About It Tuesday subjects. Um, it's funny because I've struggled to do the Talk About It Tuesdays because I feel like it's a distraction from the channel. But it's something I thoroughly enjoy doing. And secondly, some of my best performing videos on the channel 
are the talk about it stuff. So that kind of says as well that this is something that you guys enjoy and something that you do engage in and you do watch. So I'm going to keep doing those. I have no intention of changing the three episodes a week at this point. I don't have any intention of changing the release time. Uh, I think that works. We have to remember that we're dealing with a global situation and what maybe seven o'clock in the morning on a Sunday for a lot of us here uh, in the U.S. might be 5 o'clock in the morning on the West Coast or 4 o'clock in the morning. In Australia, it might be 7 o'clock in the evening on Sunday. So you know, we have a global uh, fan base and viewership to uh, kind of accommodate. And I personally feel like even though I know that the majority of the viewers on this channel are from North America and from Canada, well, I guess that's part of North America, U.S. and Canada, um, I don't know, I just feel good about that release schedule because it's a space that's really not occupied by a lot of other channels at this point. Um, and, you know, when they're released, the episodes are out there and you guys can watch them whenever. And I know a lot of you wait for the 7 o'clock. And if it does, if I make a screw up in the release time and it releases at 7.30 or 8 o'clock, I'll usually get a text or an email or something saying, hey, where's today's episode? Um, we've only missed that schedule once that I know of. We miss the time once in a while because I screw up the time zones, but we've only missed that release schedule once and it was intentional. It was on the weekend that we did the movie or the golden mullet. We didn't do Friday, Sunday. We just released that on a Saturday evening because it was a full length feature. Um, so anyway, that's my talk about it today. Thank you for four seasons that have been very successful. I look forward to sharing season five with you. I look forward to sharing my life with you and my work with you. It's going to be fun. And as long as we keep it fun, it's going to get done. All right. Share, like, subscribe, share the videos on social media, share them with your friends, share them with your enemies, send the videos to people you want to annoy. I'm okay with that. As long as they click on the video and we get some watch time out of it, it's all good. <laughs> and one more important thing around here don't forget, it's important. Rock! <laughs>